welcome to your Lake Point Kids Online Family Experience. I'm Ms. Rachel and I'm happy you are here. So when I was a girl, my mom learned how to play this game and she'd play it for all of my friends at my birthday parties. She played it with forks, but I'm gonna teach you this game today with popsicle sticks. All right, so I've got six popsicle sticks here. I'm going to put them in certain arrangements that represent a number from one to 10. You have to guess which number they represent. All right, are you ready? Let's start. All right, so what do you think? What number does this arrangement represent? Shout it out, your guess. Well, the correct number is actually four. Now, if you guess correctly, raise your hand. All right, let's try it again. All right, so what number between one and 10 does this represent? Shout out your guess. Well, the right answer is five. Did anyone guess five? That was you, nice work. All right, last one. All right, here it is. What number do you think this represents? Shout it out. If you said 10, then you are right. Raise your hand if that was you. All right, now it's time to reveal how this game works. It has actually nothing to do with the popsicle sticks, but everything to do with how I place my fingers. If you notice, each time I put out a popsicle arrangement, my fingers were in the background. And however many fingers I was showing was the number this was here. So if I did it with this popsicle stick, let's say I'm going to do the number eight. I could do any design in the world I wanted. It didn't have to make any sense whatsoever. Any design, all I'd have to do was put out eight fingers. And this is how you know it's the number eight. Pretty neat. Now you can try this game later on with your parents or your siblings or your friends and you can use popsicle sticks or forks or straws or twigs or whatever. You know what else you could do at home later with your parents? You could tell them what we're learning about in Lake Point Kids. In particular, that special word we've been talking about the past number of weeks. It starts with the same letter as forks and fingers. Yep, you got it, it's faith. Faith is trusting in what you can see because of what you can see. I'll come to three and we'll say it together. One, two, three. Faith is trusting in what you can see because of what you can see. Our corresponding memory verse this month is from the book of Ephesians, a book that was written by the Apostle Paul and is found in the New Testament. This is what the verse says. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Ephesians 2, verse 8, nerve. There is nothing you can do to earn or deserve this gift, and this gift has the power to change your life. All right, so if you're at home, press pause and try saying this verse while walking like a penguin, a crab, and a flamingo. If you're at the point with us today, turn your attention to the stage. What is that again? Well, faith is trusting in what you can see because of what you can see. And our bottom line or our focus point on today is, when bad things happen, God is with you. Let's say it together. One, two, three. When bad things happen, God is with you. Bad things, well, that could mean a lot of different things. I mean, it could be everything from a paper cut to some lost homework, a broken arm, even a shipwreck. Now there's more of that just ahead. Land Ahoy! Arr! Ahoy matey! Welcome to Story Lab! This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of an epic journey by sea! Uh. Ah! Land Ho! Land Ho! Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith, which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Even when things fall apart. Especially when things fall apart. Like in today's story. Are we spoiling the story? Well, there's a giant shipwreck. Yep, we're spoiling the story. It's pretty crazy. Waves bashing everywhere, timbers cracking up and snapping apart. Uh, we got it. 
I just think it's an awesome excuse to create our own explosion. Sounds dangerous. Not when we use these. What are they for? An exploding star. Cool. Then let's, let's make, make it. it. What? A piece of carpet? Well, this is easier to do on carpet. Where do we start? Well, you're gonna need five popsicle sticks. Do they have to be different colors? Nope, but it's more fun that way. Hmm. You're gonna wanna start by making an A shape with green on the bottom here, red over yellow, just like that. You're gonna wanna keep pressing down on these intersections as we continue on because it's gonna wanna explode a bit too early. You're gonna wanna take this blue stick and slide it under the yellow over the red and lock it under that green. Thank you. And then take the purple stick and slide it under the green, over yellow and blue and lock it under the red. Basically doing the exact same thing as the blue, just on the other side. A star is born. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch that about seven more times. But first, watch this. Here goes. Whoa! Let's see that again! When popsicle sticks are woven together, potential energy is built up via tension in the sticks. When one end of the stick is released, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, flinging the sticks up and out into a chain reaction. Okay, that's super cool, but it happens too fast. And that's why we're making a cobra weave next. Cobra weave? Well, there's a snake in today's story too. To make the cobra weave, we're gonna start with red over yellow, just like the star. Then, take your blue stick and place it over the red stick and under the yellow stick, making kind of a wonky A. Then, take the green stick, place it under the red stick and over the yellow. Make sure to keep it parallel to the blue stick. From here, take the purple, Place it under the blue and over the green. Take the orange and place it under the yellow and over purple. Perfect. And from here, you repeat the pattern until you've got a length that you're satisfied with. What happens now? Release the cobra! Wow! Oh, I gotta see that again. It's so much wreckage. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. The Apostle Paul traveled thousands of miles and started many new churches, upsetting both Jewish religious leaders and Roman authorities. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, I'm Brian. Our friend Paul told the story of Jesus everywhere he went, even when it got him in trouble. At last, a Roman commander had Paul arrested. When some men plotted to take Paul's life, the commander had Paul taken to the governor in Caesarea. Here, Paul was kept for two years. Finally, when unfair accusations were made about him before a new governor, Paul demanded, I appeal to Caesar. Now, Paul was a Roman citizen, and it was his right to get a fair trial before the ruling Caesar. But that meant an epic and dangerous trip all the way to Rome. Paul and several other prisoners were handed over to a centurion of the Imperial Regiment. I am Julius. Hail Caesar! So the men set sail, eventually making it to a harbor called Fair Havens. Paul warned Julius and the crew. Men. I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss of ship and cargo and to our own lives also. The pilot and ship's owner disagreed. 
This is a terrible place to spend the winter. We should sail on to the harbor at Phoenix. Julius listened to the pilot and the ship's owner instead of Paul. And when a gentle south wind began to blow, they jumped at the chance to set sail once more. Anchors away! But within a short time, that soft breeze became a stiff wind. And finally, whipped up to a hurricane force gale. The ship was caught up by the waves and driven by the wind. After many days, the crew feared the ship would be torn apart and sink. They even threw cargo and the ship's tackle overboard to lighten the load. We're doomed! Even though everyone else had given up hope, Paul stood strong and continued to talk with God. At last, he addressed the crew and passengers. You should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. <laughs> Paul was not above a good, I told you so. Keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God told me, do not be afraid, Paul. You must go on trial in front of Caesar. God has shown his grace by sparing the lives of all those sailing with you. I have faith in God that it will happen. However, we must run aground on an island. That night, 14 days into the storm, the ship approached land. Fearing they would be dashed on the rocks, the sailors dropped the anchors. When daylight came, they decided to make for the shore, but the ship hit a sandbar. The ship began to break up. If you can swim, jump overboard. Otherwise, grab what you can and hold on. Everyone did as Julius commanded, and miraculously, all 276 people on board made it to shore alive. They discovered they had reached the island of Malta, where the islanders welcomed them with a roaring fire. As Paul tossed some brushwood on the fire, a snake bit his hand. The islanders were sure he would die, but Paul simply shook the snake off into the fire. When nothing happened to him, they decided he must be a god. There on Malta, Paul prayed for the chief official's father and that man was healed of a fever. Through the help of God's spirit, Paul healed other sick people on the island too, and the islanders gave Paul and his fellow passengers everything they needed. The end. Arrests, prison, shipwrecks, snake bites. It's like Paul was a magnet for terrible things to happen. But through it all, Paul knew that God was with him to give him courage and strength. Now, I hope you haven't been bitten by a snake or anything like Paul had to face. But you know, you could probably make a list of all the bad things that have happened to you in your life, or maybe you're actually facing right now. Maybe there are kids in the neighborhood who are being mean to you. Maybe your pet died, or you have a cavity to get filled, or your best friend moved away. No matter what you are facing, no matter how bad it is, you can have faith that God is with you. How do I know this? Well, the Bible says so, but I've experienced this in my own life. Just the other week, my grandma died. And less than two weeks after that, my other grandma's in the hospital and the doctors are concerned and they're doing a lot of tests. I feel sad and scared, but I know God is with me. He'll get me through this, he'll get my whole family through this, and he's not gonna leave us by ourselves. God will always be with us. And God will never leave you either, no matter what. God always loves you and will give you the strength you need. Keep talking to God, friends, keep holding on. He might not make the bad stuff disappear, but he will walk with you through it right through the worst of it. All right, it's time to ring at home now after a small group time, so long if your parent listened to today's instructions. First, talk about something in your life you currently are facing that you're finding to be difficult, or maybe something you have found difficult in the past. Have you sensed God being with you and giving you strength? If so, pause and thank Him for that. If not, then pause and pray and ask God to make himself very real to you. Parents, if you have a story of a time in your life where you sense God's presence in a real and meaningful way or going through something difficult, please take time to share it with your kids. Now press pause, complete the activity, and then come back for the second set of instructions. Next, check out one little project on YouTube for how to make your very own paper boat. You and your parents can have fun making boats together, naming them, and putting them on display somewhere in your house to help you remember how God was with Paul during the hard times and he'll be with you as well. 
parents, now's the time to either scan the QR code on the screen or head over to the Lakepoint app to fill their online connection card. Signing our guestbook lets us know who is watching and helps us stay connected too. It also allows you to sign up for our latest Lakepoint initiatives and opportunities. So kids, while your parents are busy doing that, why don't you go and see if you can remember all of the provinces and territories in Canada? Watch your favorite Lake Point Kids All in Family experiences on our YouTube channel or on our Lake Point app in the Family Resources section. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. I'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Remember, when bad things happen, God is with you.